Please work, please work, please work. Oh, okay. I think I'm live. Yay. <laughs> okay, this was kind of cool. I saw that it had said something about, oh, I see thumbs up. So, holy smokes. Oh, no, these are the com. Oh, I'm seeing names here this time. <gasps> very sweet. Oh, people are checking in. Oh, very excited. Very excited. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Lynn. Wendy. Oh, very excited. Very exciting. Okay. Oh, here's Norma. Oh, excellent, excellent. Hi, C Celeste, you're not supposed to be here. You told me that you weren't gonna um, be able to make it, but I'm glad you're here. Glad you're here. Hi, Harriet, glad you could make it too. Wow, very exciting, very exciting. It's very exciting. Everyone's kind of checking in. So I guess we're coming from all over the place. And I'm in Colorado and Elbert. Well, it's warm today. Holy smokes, it's supposed to be, I don't know if you guys are watching the, the weather, but we are, our mother nature is like, um, bipolar in Colorado because we're supposed to get up to 80 degrees, I think, 70 or 80 in, in Denver tomorrow. And um, wow, <laughs> everyone's checking in. But 80 tomorrow and then the next day we're in for a blizzard. So uh, that's going to be fun. So I'll be, um, let's see, Wednesday and Thursday will be so days for me. Um, it's 12 noon here someplace. Oh, you're from New Zealand. Holy smokes. Oh, you're hiding in the linen closet, Celeste. Well, there you go. <laughs> oh, Australia. Yeah, you guys are there. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is. <laughs> I was so nervous that this wasn't going to work with the timer and everything. It's doing the countdown and I'm watching it. So to see everyone checking in, that is a fabulous. Ah. <sighs> so I'm just a little giddy. So, oh, someone's in Colorado. Laura, you're in Colorado. Yes. So you're preparing for our blizzard on Wednesday and Thursday. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm so glad you guys could join me. I think this, I think this should work. Hopefully the sound is okay again and I'm not too choppy. Uh, it doesn't look like where we have bad internet connection. So that's, um, that's very good. And I'm going to try scheduling this. I don't know what day I'll choose. I may do a poll or whatnot. But what I like about doing it from my business page, which is so dash, um, so my website is so dash bubbles.com. My business Facebook page is so bubbles. And the reason I like to do it there is because then I can share it other places because Stitch Art is only one small group. I mean, we're uh, so many people. But if I wanted to say invite the brilliant brilliance group, then they held off to join in and, you know, Stitch Artist group really wants to stay Stitch Artist. And I'm not um, uh, saying that I'm only going to be doing Stitch Artist stuff, but I wanted to make sure that uh, I thought I'd do it for my business page and then I could share it and it's it's there. So it's 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 easier there. You're not seeing anything, Sherry. Yeah, it's I think it's working. Everyone's saying they see my smiling face and doing silly things, so not sure what's what's going on. Um, hopefully, we're not clogging up Facebook. Um, anyway, uh, let's see. So, one thing I wanted to talk about today, and I'm going to move my face off this thing and try and figure out how to not have these guys pop up so much in the middle, is to uh, today is going to be talking about stitch artist. And I was just kind of funny because uh, I was on a couple groups just this week and everyone on Facebook gives their opinion on things. And it was rather strong opinion that Stitch Artist is not digitizing software. You can't digitize, especially in level one. And well, we all know anyone that is using Stitch Artist knows that you can very well digitize in level one. So I, I see people are, Celeste says she can see me, she can hear me. So um, Sherry, I don't know if you need to refresh your browser or what's going on. Oh, Sherilyn, there's double trouble. How are you, girl? <laughs> I miss your smiling face. Uh, oh, she got it to work. Woohoo. Excellent. All right. So I'm going to try and post the screen. I do know that... Um, if you can't see it now and you hear me or it's been choppy choppy, this is all recording. So unfortunately, I'm going to hear myself say this again. But if anyone is missing it, like I know someone in the UK said it was going to be like two o'clock in the morning at her place. So she doesn't, um, I, I travel time over my head. Don't understand that. So um, 
the recording will be full. So if maybe the internet browser is too congested right now, you'll at least get the recording later. Um, uh, sorry, Norma. Well, maybe we'll, we'll figure something out here. <laughs> um, like I said, you'll be able to get it later on the, uh, Facebook page cause it'll be, um, set there. I might also put these on a, a link for YouTube. Therefore you can download them if you have a YouTube account, but back to why we're here. Um, just so guys let you know, my website is so-bubbles.com. All of the notes for all of my classes are available on my website under shop. It says class notes. You can click to download, put them on your cart. They're all free. You can download them whenever you need them. As I update them, as I add new ones, that's where they're located. It's just an easy place for me to put stuff so that I don't have to remember specific links for specific classes. You guys can have all the handouts. Also available on my website for those that want to take these classes in person. I do classes around the country. So um, I have an event, for example, coming up at the Everything Embroidery Market. That's in Kentucky the first week of May. And that's what I was working on. You guys didn't see when I came in. I have to do a hat. We're doing the Kentucky Derby hat. So I have to add embroidery to my hat. And I was measuring it, trying to figure out what I'm going to do on this guy. I haven't figured that out yet. But that's in May. And I have workshops that are going on in that, the Essentials and Stitch Artists. And that's in person. So that's one of the events I have going on. In at the end of May, I have Houston, which is three days of classes. Now days one and two, they sold out. So day three, which is only Stitch Artists, that's still available. Next month is June, and I have the applique getaway, which is in Dallas, Irving, Texas. And I have workshops, and they have the VIP classes, and the regular lecture classes, and you have the vendor booth. So the applique getaway is very similar to the Everything Embroidery Market as far as the trade show goes. And they have classes. And then in June, that's June, in July, I have three days in Denver. And we're slowly filling that up. And I'm just amazed that we have equal numbers on each day so far. So usually there's always one and two sell out fast. Well, I have three. They're all growing at the same time. Okay. I see people are still checking in. Hi, Debbie. A Deb from Denver in Philly. I guess Deb is in Philly, but she's from Denver. Okay. <laughs> so let me see if I can switch this over to the Stitch Artist screen. So let me click on this guy here. Whoops. Current application. Whoop. There we go. There we go. Come to Florida. I was in Florida, Mary. Um, I was in Florida. When was I there? Um, whoopsie. Not, not here. That's not what I want. I want this guy here. I want... Boom. I was in Florida in... Um, December. And I might come back to Florida again. So we'll see. Um, but I was just in Florida. Anyway. All right. So this is my Stitch Artist screen, or this is my Imbrillion screen, as I should say. And as you're looking at it, it pretty much, uh, what I love about the Imbrillion's products is that the platform looks exactly the same. So um, it's you don't have to completely relearn a program when you add the digitizing component. The Stitch Artist button is here at the top. If you notice, my, when, you put, when I put my mouse cursor on it, if I was not, does it work now, possibly? Yes, it pops up and it says, I'm in create mode, or if I click this button, I will be in create mode. So there are three levels to Stitch Artist, and the create mode button, in Yes, I'm on a Mac, Harriet, and it works either on Mac or Windows. I'm showing you, I can only show one thing at a time. So this, it, it pretty much looks the same, except there's a little apple in the upper left-hand corner that you won't notice. And it just looks a little bit different, but it works fun, exactly the same on Mac or Windows. But what's nice is that if you have been using Essentials or Enthusiast and the customizing software, your platform looks exactly the same. When you add Stitch Artist, you get the Create button. When you choose the create button, there are three levels, okay? And depending on which level you have are the buttons that you're going to see. Now, I have showing here the buttons that are in level one. And when people ask me what um, the difference is between the levels and which levels should I get, it really depends on what your expertise is and where you want to go with the software. 
If you've never digitized before and you're thinking, I just want to do simple things like appliques and in the create in the hoop designs and do freestanding lace and create cross stitch and maybe do some embossed towels and I'm going on and on because all these things that I'm saying can all be done in level one. But a level one person, that's like for personal use. You want to do something quick and simple and you don't need the satin column. Satin columns are for those that want to do true type fonts and want to do the swirly designs and have controls so that you don't get those clumpy stitches in the corners and all your angles are swoopy nicely. Yes, the auto column in level one works really well, but level two gives you all those controls. So a beginner person should start with level one. What I loved about it when I was first introduced to the software here, um, Brian showed me the level one program. I said, wow, first of all, what a clean interface it has here. If you see at the top, there's not a lot of buttons. Now, if you notice on mine, I have a, two extra buttons and those in the Stitch Artist group and you saw Brian's um, preview, there is a new couple new buttons that are uh, going to be involved in this and the update that is coming soon. I am testing it. All the other guys at, at the um, at home base are testing this, knocking it out. It is coming soon. We don't repl unlike some other programs out there and brilliance does not release software that crashes and bugs have to get fixed constantly. We release a, stable product. So it, that requires a lot of testing. And when you add height, if when you add features that are easy for us to use as consumers, that's a lot of background work that's going on underneath the hood, a lot of interface stuff. So we, I know patience, 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 but either way, level one, the buttons that are here are very clean and crisp. There's not a lot of choices. So you buy, you get some of these programs and there's 76 buttons and you're like, oh, all I want to do is draw a line. How? All I want to do is open an image. How do I do that? Well, and they, what's really nice is that they've broken it down. So on the left side here, we have image and true type font. These are the two types of, of objects or graphics that you can bring into the program. So if I click on the image button, that allows me to open a dialog. I have to browse to the folder on my computer. Now on my desktop, I have a folder called untitled because I forgot to title it. In here, I have a JPEG file. JPEGs, bitmaps, that is what can be opened into level one. So when I select that design or that graphic, I click open and it places it into the center of my screen. Now I can use the digitizing tools here to create it. Now I lay back up a bit because I was talking about um, the differences between the levels and I just didn't want to get or forget why I recommend level one for beginners. If you know that you really want to digitize, it's just something that you have a passion for, you want to create your own designs. If you have ever digitized before with any other software, you really need to start with level two. And the reason is, is because level two has more buttons than level one. It includes everything that you know in level one. So many people do upgrade from level one to level two rather quickly because they outgrow it or they're like, okay, I'm ready to go more. So it has more features, um, buttons, but the same, the level one buttons are still there. So every, those that begin in level one and, and take a few months and maybe a year, maybe two years, maybe three years, however long, they can add level two when and if they're ready and get the new features and functions. The interesting button that's here with the level two, it's called vector. Now, when you are in level one, you are drawing your own shapes or you use the library shapes to create your design because it's all part of the process. It's, this is the beginner level software and you have to be, have controls of, and know what it is that you're doing. The whole purpose of digitizing, you create an object, so you draw it and you assign stitches to it and you have to set those stitches. The drawing part, those that have graphic skills, that's like one tiny, tiny part. And the only way to learn that drawing part, if you don't have those skills, is to practice. Practice, practice, practice. I don't have those skills, so I've been practicing. Um, I might as well bring up the mouse. I use a mouse to digitize just because I am I have zero patience with Lisa. No patience. So, um, 
<clears throat> Told you, BB are involved here. So I don't have patience with learning how to use new equipment. I just want to, to get going. So even though the mouse is not easy for me and I have zero drawing skills, it's a comfort level. So, but Stitch Artist works with the tablets, with the pens, with the, um, you know, it's a Surface Pro that you draw on it. I have a Wacom uh, Windows 10 computer. I actually like really drawing on that because it's a, a computer screen that ha like the Surface Pro is, and it works really well and I can move my points around. The, my problem is, is that it runs Windows. And once you go to a Mac, it's really hard for you to switch back to Windows. It, it's just, just, it's just what happens. Anyway, I digress. Besides, um, I had mentioned the level two button, the vector button that's here. When you use that feature, let me just select this guy and hit the delete key. When you click on the vector button, this allows you to bring in all of your SVG files, all of your FCM files. They're already drawn for you, which if you've seen any of the videos like I've done on the Embrilliance YouTube channel on the and in the uh, Stitch Artist Digitizing Fans, everything is already drawn. So basically, if you select your SVG file and you click in Fill Stitches, it pretty much auto-digitizes your design for you. And we don't, everyone, we don't do auto-digitize design. The plus sign of, um, Plus sign of having your objects already drawn for you is that now you can go through and make adjustments. You can reshape this because a, a vector file, it was designed for vinyl, for paper, for a little tiny blade that you draw around, cut around a shape and you come back. Stitches, embroidery, you have to send an in and an out. So this, it has a start stitching at one point and, and it has to go a certain angle with a certain stitch length and then it has to exit at a certain point. You just can't make everything zero degrees, which is what it is here. And each of these objects has stitches assigned to it. They're start and stop in the same place, it's the same fill. This is boring. This is not, this is a starting point. And you might not have those skills because of you might have those skills because you've never digitized before beginners that's what i'm saying if you're a beginner person you may say oh this is great and then you stitch it out and like well this is kind of lovely you know it's it's just boring so level two gives you the opportunity of bringing in shapes and customizing them uh, that are already done drawn svg files vector files it also, as I mentioned, has the satin column, which is great for true type fonts. That's how you have to set your angles so that your curves go in the direction that you want. That is in the level two program. Think of a rainbow. When you have a satin, you want the rainbow to go all the way across. And when you have a loopy S, you want it to follow the loopies all the way around. Not the loopies. Yes, with the satin column. And it, it does it that way. You need to have those skills and it, the satin column tool is one of the hardest tools to master and it does it, so it's not click poof done. It's takes some time, which is what level two is all about. This is for someone that likes to digitize, wants to play around with the software, has learned how to use these other features and they're going, they're taking their craft one step further. Level three has all the features of level one, all the features of level two, but we've added all the graphical operators to the program so that those who understand flatten and union and um, uh, subtract all those, they work with graphics, they don't work with stitches. They have to do with taking a bite out of an apple, you know, so you have a bite and you have the apple and you can flatten them and you have an apple bite. There's videos on that on the Embrilliance website. It's just, and this is if all this talk is over your head, you probably don't need to start with level three right away. <laughs> so, and it all, I mean, there's all the other features that are involved in it. For example, it has the professional level. Those that are digitizers under your create menu, you have all these abilities of under your, um, oh, why did that get real small there? That's odd. Um, all the publishing. So you can make your own motifs and all your, your own type of embossed patterns, set style sheets like in Microsoft Word, where you can set up your um, different styles for different stitch types. 
you can also batch export your designs that you create in um that you've digitized from scratch in your level three so level three is more of a professional program professional level okay good anyway that goes through all the levels and i see you guys got all really quiet oh hi rob i see you're checking in from alaska very nice very nice and Nancy loves her Mac. That's fabulous. Sorry. I'm, <laughs> take, I need to take a sip and I probably should stop talking when I do that. Mm. Mm. Ah, very good. Very good. Let me close up my SVG. Do not save. I'm going to open up my brand new design and we're going to go back to Stitch Artist level one just to, to have it here. Now, I usually prefer to work in level two just because some people, if there's anyone asking questions here, I want to make sure I can pop in and, and tell them exactly what it is. Um, at least I'm going from there to there. But let me go back and open up that graphic that I had gotten from. If you have any questions, unless there's a, you can ask them here and hopefully I will see them. Unless you're really scrolling by, it was you guys were going a little too fast with all the welcoming things and I'll have to go through each one of them again later because that was so nice to hear from you. But oh, here we go. I saw we had someone from Malaysia that checked in. I thought that was kind of cool. All right. So here I am. I clicked on my image button. I'm in create mode image. I'm in that lovely untitled folder and I am selecting this flowers uh, JPEG. Uh, I'm going to click open. And it places it right in the middle of my screen. Deborah, I want to convert to Mac. Can I have uh, Windows and Mac at the same time? Oh, sure, absolutely. Um, the way that the Embrillion software works is that the, the serial number is licensed to you, not to a computer, it's, it's to you. So if you own a Mac and a Windows computer, you are allowed to install it on both computers at the same time because they're yours. And you're allowed to do that. That's just how it is. Um, I have, I'm, I run it on both computers all the time because I have to, it's just never knows what it's doing. Okay. Good question. Oh, excuse me. I will tell you though, that if you've been, if you are a windows user for a long time and you decide to switch to Mac, be patient with yourself. <laughs> I used to be a Mac user and I had to switch to windows. And <laughs> that was a long, hard learning curve. And then I was a windows user for 50, 18, Wow, long, long time. Um, 18 years, Windows. And then I switched to Mac. Ugh. It was like learning to ride a bicycle all over again, backwards. It was just not fun. <laughs> so, uh, but now that I'm back on Mac, I, I really do enjoy the Mac platform. There, But there are some, there are some cool features in Windows that we don't have on Mac, like moving your panes around and other things that we can't do. And that's a Mac issue. But... It doesn't matter which operating system you have. On the fence of buying Stitch Artist 1 and 2. Hopefully this will help. Yes. Savage Mon in Minnesota, Montana. And then, I don't know, Rita. Nice. Okay. Well, you're on the fence. Well, I don't want to push you off the fence. We want to. We want you to join. Come. Come. I have candy. <laughs> Tonight I have beer. <laughs> okay. Um, so I have my little... Um, uh, for those of you that are on the fence, we... Um, Make sure that you know you have the demo version, demonstration version on the website. And the demonstration version, you can't save in it. But if you're new, you don't know what you're doing anyway. So you have 90 days um, money back guarantee on the website. So um, you, either you have no risk. You have three months to figure out if you want to digitizing. But switching between the levels, if you want to try the software, download the demonstration version. And when you open the demo, what I usually tell people is to select the programs that you already own. So if you already have Essentials and Enthusiast, check both of those off so that you have those and then choose Stitch Artist 1. When, you, when the program opens up or loads up, it will have all the Enthusiast, all the Essentials buttons and Stitch Artist 1 functions. When you're done playing around with that, close the program down, reopen it again, Enthusiast Essentials, Search Artist Level 2. And then you'll, so you get a feel for what it is that you're going to be um, having. Um, hi, Barb and Joan. Good to see you here. Um, it, I just feel if you try, check everything and you don't have anything and you get, you say, oh, I'm going to, I checked it all. I want to try Stitch Artist 1. And you see all the buttons because you've checked everything. 
it's a little disconcerting. You, so you just select what you already have. And if you don't have essentials, uncheck it. And then just check Stitch Artist because then you'll see what your limitations are with existing Stitch files. Hopefully that answered that question. <laughs> and uh, Rob and I have been bantering about the Mac and PC differences today. So he happened to, he's a, it's near and dear to his heart, that topic of conversation. Uh, I, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> okay, so here on my screen here, um, yes, the demo mode is, is fabulous because it's a great way to try out programs, uh, see what it is that you want to add to your, your software. So here I have my graphic that I've opened up using the image button and it brings in my JPEG or my bitmap or uh, PNG files, whatever a, a raster image is, something that doesn't have vectors. So when you open it up, it's pretty much just a background image. It doesn't do anything. I can't click on anything. I can't do anything with it. The only thing I can do before I've added anything is maybe resize it and rotate it to make it fit my screen. So make it, what I usually tell people is work at the size that you're going to be stitching it at because you want to make sure um, that the stitches and what you are creating is relevant to what you're going to be stitching. And if I'm stitching, if I am designing something like, say I have this flower and the first, I'm going to stitch on multiple items. Say I'm going to stitch this on in the center of a table runner. So it's going to be nice and big, but I also want to put a couple in the corners. So they're going to be smaller. And then I want tiny ones to put in the napkins. So I'm basically going to want three versions of this one design. What I will do is I will digitize the smallest version first. And the only reason that I do that is because it's easier for me to add details later than to take away things. Because when you digitize something really large, you can do texture and maybe add some fringe and, and do lots of stuff or turn into an applique so that you're not um, using so much thread. Because if you decide to stitch this out six by 10, that's going to be one big ugly blob in the center there. If you have a you know big stitch thing all by itself, you may want to turn that to applique or make it 3D or do something different to it. But it's going to be the same shape, same feel, and you can still work from your small version and add stuff. But if you do all that crazy stuff at six by 10 and now, oh, I really want it to be five by seven and oh, I really want it to be two by two, it's harder at least it's harder for me to take stuff away because it looks so cool at the big size. And I'm thinking, can I do that at the smaller size? And making this as an applique at two inches, uh, that's not my idea of a good time. So, um, and I have a scan and cut. I have the Cameo, cut, so cutting machines, but still applique at that size, eh, not my deal. So make sure you, what I recommend doing is if this is a one-off or something that you're digitizing for sizes, I suggest starting at the smaller size so you can add and when I digitize my solid, smallest size, I test it, get it all set, save it, save my working file. I don't care about the stitch file because I can always create another stitch file from my working file. So I save my work file, say yeah, I'm just gonna be two by two. So I save it as scroll flower two by two, save it. Now when I have that open, I go file, save working file as scroll flower four by four. My two by two is over here safe on my cloud or wherever I'm saving my backup stuff. It's over here. And I'm working on the four by four size. When I get that four by four size, I may simply just have to take that two by two, make it bigger and just make sure that all the curves are right and everything looks nice. Run a sew simulator, do a test. So just because I, it's habit, unless it's two o'clock in the morning and it's due in a few hours. Uh, <laughs> but I usually do a test. So just to see what it's going to look like. And if it's fine, then I save that off, make sure I have that back. And then I save it also as flower scroll or scroll flower eight by eight or 12 by 12 or whatever it is the next size I'm doing. So I still have my working files of two by two, four by four, eight by eight. So that if I need to say make a seven by seven, I'm going to open up the eight by eight because that's not but smaller, I can make it a little bit smaller. I'm not gonna open the two by two and then do all that all over again. So I have the three sizes saved. Um, are my classes suitable for beginners? She's thinking about coming to Texas in June. Absolutely, especially the ones at the applique getaway, um, any, all levels. 
all levels. You bring your laptop, we're happy clams, and we just go step by step through it. Hands-on classes, I've had people take them um, with listening, kind of like what you guys are doing here. Um, they, they leave the computers at home or they leave the computer closed on the desk because we go at a much slower pace. So I'm ex I answer all the questions and we go back and forth, back and forth. I actually had one lady, she took about four classes from me in a row um, when I was uh, teaching someplace and she didn't even use her computer. She just kept pointing me and uh, directing me how to do what she wanted me to do. So it was actually kind of fun because she, if she can teach me, she was I was teaching the class, but if she, when I said, well, how do I add a motif to this? Because we've done it four times. And she says, well, no, you got this button and this button and blah, blah, blah. That means she understood what, what we had done. She wasn't focused on, on watching where her mouse was. So anyway, yes, they're amazing. Oh, you to, yes, Deborah, you were in Portland. We had a great group in Portland. Okay, so, but there are quite a few on the Brilliance Educational Group. In Brilliance Educational Opportunities Group. That's the group that the only thing that we talk about there are my classes. That's why I started the group up. And so that we talk about where I'm going to be, what the classes are about. So um, if you're interested in taking the classes, join that group and ask a question because um, you'll be able to talk with other people that have already taken classes. And yes, all of the classes that I do, the hands-on ones, you take your laptop with you. I don't provide laptops. Mm -hmm. Imagine that, me lugging along all these laptops. <laughs> Not my idea of a good time. All right, so we have our graphic, and when the only thing that's selected in your page or you have in here is your graphic, you still have no stitches. If you look at your stitch file, stitches down here on the taskbar, it's zero because there's no stitches on this yet. To create stitches, first of all, you have to create objects. And an object is basically a shape that's a wireframe shape, so it has nodes and it, it has it's adjustable, and that shape can have stitches and any stitch type assigned to it. Now, different ways of creating your stitches are listed here at the top. One of them, when you have a graphic, and this one was a download from Sanquiti Designs, um, um, it, so it was uh, Sanquiti. There's are a few websites, and I'll list them later, that I usually get my clip art from. It, uh, this is royalty free, so she gives a licensing so that you can sell the file to digitize with it. And you'll see much, many of her files are um, sold by many digitizers because she has a great license when it is creating it. But this what I is what I consider digitizer-friendly clip art. This, if you think about how this design looks, Except for these little tiny stitches thingies here, which I'm imagining maybe a sashiko or a running stitch in my head, it has nice clean regions. So what that means, because this is nice and flat, nice solid colors, not such sort of shading. Um, I have the magic wand tool here, and the magic wand tool allows you to, when you click on it, you put your mouse, see how your mouse cursor turns into a magic wand? When you put it on top of a color, and it's a solid color, so you gotta make, you have to pay attention to where that little pointy thing is. And I, it's so funny because I'm, I'm pointing at my screen and you guys can't see me pointing. I can't use my laser pointer here. Oh, but my mouse cursor, there's a little spoosh at the end of it. You have to make sure that spoosh, the magic y wandy thingy, is in your region that you want to click to select because if it happens to be in you see I'm a little off I'm in the white if I click here I'm in the white I'm not in the pink I need to be in the pink because that's what I want to select when I click left click one time can you see on the screen here how there's all these little nodey things nodes are the little circle dots the line in between the circles is the connecting line and the node is the adjustment so it has basically drawn a bezier shape, um, bezier shape, so that you can now assign stitches to that shape. But the magic wand is still selected. Now, before I, I click on something else, because all these tools here, you left click to do it. So I left clicked in the pink to create the shape. If I want to click again and create the green shape. I put my mouse cursor in the green shape and click the shape. I want the yellow shape, mouse cursor, 
yellow shape. When you're done clicking and creating your shapes, you must right click to end. So before we end, I want to show you one of the other things that you can do while you're in magic wand mode. First of all, if you don't have such a clean, clear graphic, you may need to adjust your sensitivity. And Brian has a fabulous video showing about adjusting the sensitivity going up and down. You want to, you, those nodes are how you adjust the shape because you can reshape them and create different shapes. And you don't want a six billion of those because then you can't adjust anything. So you need to use your slider for sensitivity up and down. The other option that's right neat here says look for holes. Mm. Do you see the stress that's, that's been coming through? I, I, have a, I have an issue with holes in embroidery because holes work great because if you, for vinyl work, Okay, if you want to create this out of um, paper or something and you want, or ink, okay, ink, you don't want the pink to flood fill behind this and then put the green ink on top of it because then you'll have mud, okay? With vinyl, you layer things. With machine embroidery, you really want to layer things as well because it's holes are complicated. They're not normal. But if you, for some reason, you really needed to have a hole in this, you can check this option. Did I click it? Whoops. Uh oh. What did I click? Well, that was not a good option. See, I put my mouse cursor in the wrong place. And this, when you see something on the screen that you don't like, just undo it. And I just unclicked it. We don't want that hole. Oh, I clicked in the white by accident. Okay, let me stop. Let me do this again. This is what happens when you're working live. Magic wand. Click in here. I don't want a hole, so I want to make sure that look for holes is turned off. That's the bottom line. Okay. If I have it turned on, it should, do you see how it turned on the green hole? I don't want that either. So we're going to turn that off. No hole. But my magic wand is still active. I can put my magic wand in my green and click. I should be looking at my real screen. And do you notice my color changes over here on the, on the right hand side in the properties pane? It was pink, it's now green, and when I put my mouse cursor in the yellow and I left click, see it turns yellow? So it's actually coloring these objects for you as you go along so that when you apply stitches, it's gonna sort of look like what you want. Okay, I am done using my magic wand. I don't wanna go and magic wandy those little tiny dashy things because that's just insane. I'm gonna draw those by hand, it's okay. When you're done magic wanding, you right click and you're done. Now you have an object, for example, this first one, which was the pink. Now that I have a shape, an object, I can go up to here where it says stitches and I can choose what type of stitch type I want to put into it. If I want to turn this into a fill, I can click on the fill stitch. If I want to change it into an applique, I change on the applique stitch. These are the basic stitch types that you use for an embroidery design and you can play with them. The thing is, is that you can only assign one stitch type per object. So what that, what that means is if you said you wanted to make this into a fill stitch, and this is just a filled region right here, and it's a pink blob, and you want this pink blob to also have a pink outline going around it. You can't just click on the outline. You have to make another object of this exact same shape. So the way to do that is it's super duper easy. You click on the copy button here at the top. You click on the paste button here at the top, which is right next to it. And you see it put another one down here at the bottom, which is the fill stitch. Now I'm gonna go up here and up here, up here, up here, up here. Please go and hit run stitch. And all I have to do is move this up to the top. Please it's gonna let me drag and drop it. Boop, dump, boom. So that I have a fill stitch, I have a running stitch, and then it's gonna go go on and do its its thing. If you want to verify, I mean we've digitized already, by the way, in case you didn't know. Let me select everything off. Click on my sewing simulator here, and you can actually watch it sew through. It's stitching, stitching, stitching. That's the underlay because I didn't adjust anything. It's doing the fill stitching on top. Whoops. And once it's done its fill stitching, it's going to do its run stitch all the way around. So it's, I've created something so far. 
When's, I mean, it's, it's just, that's fascinating to me that you created it. You can watch a stitch out. If you look at the bottom left, right corner here, we already have 9,000 stitches in here, but we haven't done any adjustments. It's just something that we're playing with. If I go back to level one of my create mode and I say, you know, that fill is actually kind of solid. Maybe I want a motif instead as opposed to that fill. I don't have to recreate anything again. While I have this fill stitch selected, all I have to do is go to the motif click on it. It changes to a motif fill where I can add my motif styles. And there are like over 220 something motifs that are in here. And I mean, there's a crazy amount of motifs. Now I should choose something that I haven't, that maybe I've tried before. Try that. Click OK. Let's see, it's a little small. So I can use my sliders to make them larger. Oh, there we go. Larger. There we go. Zoom in. What? Can you see that little, that's turning that into a motif going around it. Let me, once I have my shapes created, by the way, so that I can actually see what I'm working on, I like to turn off my background graphic. Okay, now this is a key point because once you turn it off, you have to remember to turn it back on if you bring in another image. Turning off your background graphic is up here on the, on the top, See, it looks like a little picture frame. It says graphic, it says show or hide back graphic. If you click on it to turn it off, all you see are your stitches. Now, a question from Michelle, is it better to copy that way or to create two line objects and change one to a fill and one to a run? Uh, it doesn't make a difference uh, as far as um, how do you do it? How do you choose to show only one stitch artist module when you have all three? Um, you can, um, get hired to teach the software and you get a special serial number. If you own all three, you don't need to turn off anything. Keep them. <laughs> I get to see all three because that's a, that's a Lisa Shaw thing because I'm teaching the software. You don't need to turn it off. <laughs> but, you know, we can, we can talk. You want to start teaching the software? <laughs> we, we can have this conversation. Um, okay. But, the reason I like to turn off my background graphic after a while is because I'm like, ooh, I, it, it gets too noisy. I'd like to see what my stitches are going to look like. I need to have that visualization. Now, but it gets um, a little scary because you don't see your graphic anymore. And the next time you go to open a graphic in the background, you'll see it here in your object list, but you won't see it on the screen. So you have to make sure that you go up here to the top and you turn it back on that will turn your graphic back on, but it's a great toggle. The other one, the eyeball that's right underneath it, that's another thing that happens. If you wanna see your graphic and not look at your stitches, you have to click your eyeball. But this brings up the question, oh, I, don't, I can't see my stitches. I have them drawn, but I don't see my motif fill. Where did it go? Do I need to reinstall the software? No, you just need to click on the eyeball. Okay, so show your stitches as the eyeball, show your graphic as the picture. These are kind of like, the, um, where'd your hoop go? You, everyone should, hopefully knows that it, when your hoop disappears and you can all see my hoop boundary here on the side, but it most, it, sometimes it can disappear because you hit the H key on your keyboard. Hitting the H key brings your hoop back. These are the two toggles to take your stitches back and take your pictures back. Okay. Now the one thing I want to mention first about the copy and paste type thing. Now I'm going to, let me do and take this, um, hold on. And take this guy and I'm going to, he's already copied. Let's put a little copy again, copy again, a new design, and I'm going to paste it into place. What sometimes happens with those of us that are digitizing and those of us that are playing with the software, there on your, in your object pane, do you, if you notice, I have a one design, it has a one with a little triangle next to it, and it has one object. If I want to copy and paste this item, Okay, um, you want to keep it all within one design. So you need to make sure that you select just the object you want to copy and paste. Because if you click on your design and you go to copy and paste this, let me go here, copy and paste, and you change this to say to a satin border. Now let's look at the, take that first one and let's change that to a running stitch. 
because this is what happens. Those of you that are making in the hoop designs and you're digitizing and you're doing that whole copy and paste thing, even if this is another color. So we're going to change our second color here. Whoops. Click on this guy, change him to a, whoops, a different color. Okay, so we have color number one is the maroony color. Color number two is the pinky color. We have in our object pane, two designs. Do you see one with the triangle, two with the triangle? If you have windows, they have plus signs next to them. So when you have two overlapping designs, Essentials has a feature called remove hidden stitches. Well, look at your object pane. Design number two is hiding the stitches of design number one. So they're removed automatically. They're just, why well, you don't need them. You have two designs that are overlapping each other. The solution is to either set the first one, the running stitch, and give it a job, and that job would be an applique. So the shortcut way of giving this a job as an applique positioning stitch is to right click on your color chip and say, this is gonna be my applique position stitch. Okay, now it will not remove hidden stitches because the software says, I can't touch that one. That one has a job. His, if I get rid of his job, and you're going to get mad. It's, I can't do it. It's not allowed. If, it's, if the color has a job of applique, it must stay. The other way, when you are digitizing your own designs, if you select both of them, all or two of them or 10 of them or however many designs that are one right after another, one right after another, because you copied and pasted the designs, select them, go to your create menu and where it says design, there's an option that says combine designs. Choose combine designs, look at your object pane, it now has one design with two objects in it. Does that make sense? Hopefully, hopefully it makes sense. You'll see this, this happens all the time on the Stitch Art is Digitizing Fans group. And the, the reason is, is because we're copying and pasting designs, not objects. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. And you're going to take 10 more years to learn everything. I, well, I didn't learn this all overnight. Hate to tell you guys. <laughs> Anyone that teaches the software has been doing whatever they're teaching a long time. If they haven't been doing it a long time, then... Uh, you know, that's, that's topic for another day. <laughs> now, someone had asked a question about going over, going into business. I did a, um, a podcast with the two regular guys. You can go, if you go to my Sew Bubbles Facebook page, there's a link to it. I also linked it on my YouTube channel. That covers some stuff. That's, I can't cover that today. That's a lot. That's, that's a whole topic all by itself, but maybe a future, future one. Okay. So let me go back to our first design here. And, oh, I am still in magic wand mode here, I think. Right click to end, here we go. There we go, click this guy. So, I have my fill, I have my run, this one here. Hmm. Now, in this particular instance, it doesn't make sense for this guy to be a, a fill stitch on top of this, unless, of course, you know, wait, you have to have a plan before you start digitizing anything. And unfortunately, when I went into this plan, I didn't have one. <laughs> I actually just thought I was gonna make the bottom shape an applique shape, and then I'd add some stitches on top and some more stitches. If you did want it to, um, say, make a hole in this, and say, put the, the um, satin stitches around both of them, that's when you need a hole in the center. So to combine this motif fill, with the green hole. You have to select them both. And I held on the Mac, it's hit holding down the command key while I select on the windows. I think it's the control key um, to select multiple items in your object list. And that's how I select them. Once I have them both selected, I'm going to go to the create menu, outline and choose combine holes. What that does is that's going to make my holes show through here so that I can now take this guy here, which is my outline, make him into a satin border and have a, maybe an embossed design. Mary, this is what you will need to know. You have to watch it again to see how to uh, combine designs. Yes, it's very easy <laughs> to combine designs. Just select them, create designs, combine designs. But see, that's what's great about having this video here. Ah, getting flushed, getting tired. <clears throat> 
having each object having a job that is very important to keep keep in mind keeping your objects or your designs under control so that you can not have 5000 of them this is just good digitizing practice so that when you become more advanced you can when you get to level 3 the key point is publishing your designs to your library or publishing your motifs each one of those designs that go published into your library needs to be a separate design so that it can be saved there. So once you get into the practice, even in level one, starting at the beginning and learning the baby steps, how proper digitized designs are created and how the, the software works on helping you be a more def deficient, um, efficient digitizer, it's going to help you you learned it the right way in the first place and it builds yourself up. And that's one of the things I really like to teach in my classes. We go through a lot of this nuts and boltsy basic type stuff um, because it's just, it's, once you learn it how to do it right way, when you, when someone gives you a tool to make it easier, then you set up your design in the first place and it just goes faster. That probably didn't make any sense, but Anyone who has learned how to do things the hard way, <laughs> when you when you have an easier way of, of doing it, it just goes smoother and it, it, go, it goes faster. Can't even think of a good analogy for that. Um, I had mentioned that I would draw these in by hand. While I'm doing digitizing this, I like to use the draw with points. I did a great little short video on the in Brilliance YouTube channel. It's on the Stitch Artist playlist on how to draw with points because there's different the when you to draw with points your mouse cursor is every time you click you are putting a node down so for me to create or for you to create this curve you need to keep in mind that fewer clicks are easier to adjust than more clicks and i'm going to show you why i'm going to left click here at this point i'm going to move my mouse cursor over here left click again oh and and we do not panic because at this point you see this line that's going here it doesn't matter. Breathe. Let it go. Okay. <laughs> and as I go around my curve, leaving enough space so that I, I can create what it is I want. And in fact, I'm just going to be really crazy. And I'm going to click on this very point end here because I can now, when I do this, I'm going to reshape this three clicky notey thingy into that curve so easily. Three notes. I'm going to right click to end because I see how my I'm still if I keep clicking now and I try to adjust this node, it's going to put another node there. It's going to make a mess. So I'm going to right click to end because that's all these drawing tools. When you're done using them, you right click to end. Now I can go in here and either put my mouse cursor on that line, click hold and drag it out. I can click on a node and you get these handles and you can adjust those handles so that you're, they, they get a little disconcerting after a while because, or not after a while, in the beginning, because you're not sure how they work. But once you get used to them, look how, I mean, that was nice and easy. And if you decided you wanted to reshape this, here it is. It looks exactly like this. But say you wanted to maybe make it go curly Q in. You don't have 5,000 nodes. Let's, well, let me show you. I, when I was teaching drawing, and I don't teach drawing, I, it would be frustrating for me because everyone wants their design to look perfect on the first time. You see what I'm doing? Right click then. Do you see all those little nodes? In order to adjust this line, I got to move every single one. So if I want to curl this in, it's, that's too much work. You got to work easier, harder. No, work smarter, not harder. Okay. So if I want to curl this guy in, I'm just going to move him in. I'm going to put my mouse cursor on this line and I'm going to double click to add a new node. Move him up. Move this guy. Move him in. Now he needs to go back out because I reshaped it. You see, I, you can easily reshape. And let me turn off my graphics so I don't have to look at him anymore. See how we reshape him? Maybe it'll make him a different color so that we can actually see him.
how much easier it is to reshape that. And once you have a line, I can go up here to my run tool, go to my run properties, and I can change this to a singles run, a double run, a bean stitch, a chain stitch, or even a sashiko. Now this sashiko, let's zoom in and look at it. This almost looks like that dashy liney thingy. Do you see it has, it's a fatter satin stitch. That's how, whoops, that's not great. You can't really see what that is. It has a fatter stitch going through here and then there's like a little tiny jump. It don't, it kind of, that jump is so small it embeds itself. So it, this is, this is what I would choose because it's easy and it's an illusion and I am an artist and I am allowed to make my design look like however it, what, however it makes me happy. And that's what the whole thing is. Um, and I haven't really done anything other than level one functions. So beginners, someone who's new, this is a fun little project, fun little things that you can can do in the program. Uh, yes, Fran, you can watch and you can watch it. Uh, we'll rewatch this later. Barb, I see you're going to watch the entire day later. Barb was also in Portland. Fran's going to see me in Kentucky. Woo, we have fun. We have fun in our classes. Um, you get to hear all my stories. I don't, I don't drink beer, but I will have, I, we, we learn a lot in, in the hands-on classes. Uh, someone had asked if you don't have a laptop, like I said, it usually, I don't supply laptops, but you know, there's going to be 30, 40 other people in the class or depending on which class you go to people share laptops, two heads in front of a, one computer is my ideal. I wish I could force that to happen, to have two people at every computer. The reason is, is that at least one of you is paying attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> Otherwise everyone's looking at their screen and trying to do what I do. And they have no idea that it's, I get to repeat it 10 times. So if I could have two people at every computer, it's pretty much guaranteed someone's watching me <laughs> and it goes a lot smoother. But uh, so we do have people that share that look on, take notes, do what it is that what they want to do. Hi, Brittany. When and where the classes in Lexington? They're in, they're not in Lexington. They're in Owensboro, Owensboro, Kentucky, first week of May. And the website for that is eemshows.com. You can all find all the links to all of my classes on my website, which is so-bubbles.com. And you click on the education and that brings it up. I'm not sure everyone keeps asking me. I must've gotten 15 emails maybe in the past couple days about people asking about, um, um, Lexington, Kentucky. I'm like, I'm not going to Lexington. Don't know what that's about. But, um, uh, Chattanooga. Yes, I, I taught in Chattanooga. Hi, Australia. I am coming down under. I need to get with Mr. Gary Walker from Echidna Sewing Products because I am coming to, um, Australia in November. So, um, <laughs> I will, I will be there. My husband's actually coming with me, although he's not, he doesn't do anything in the classes, but, uh, I need to get with him so we can start advertising that. But yes, it's going to be in November. I'll be there for, um, but it's put on by Echidna Sewing Products. So if you're in Australia and you want to get information on the classes, Echidna Sewing Products are located in Queensland, I think. Queensland? Yes. Kapalava. That's where well, they have they have stores in uh, places in Melbourne and oh, I mispronounced that. Um, other locations and they have their agents in places. But Echidna Sewing Products, the uh, Gary Walker with Christy and uh, Daniel, they they're the ones that usually sponsor me to come on in and, and do the classes. So they are November. <laughs> Exciting. Okay. Fran loves classes. Um, Harriet. Yes, we did a cruise. Our cruise was what? Maybe last year, two years ago. I don't remember. It was around Halloween. So, um, yes, K Kentucky. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. How about Indiana? Okay. You know, guys, I have a full-time job and my job is... <laughs> Uh, my, I've been struggling to find locations that can hold, um, um, hold, what can I hold? And you do hold, uh, 20, 24 to 30 people because for me to come and teach a hands-on class, that's, I can't, I, I live in Elbert, Colorado. Okay. <laughs> I am nowhere near anything. So it takes me a full day of travel to get anywhere and a full day of travel to come home. So if I can't teach at least 24 to 30 people in a hands-on class for at least two, if not three days, I'd rather stay home and, and play in my sewing room. <laughs> so, um, oh, Michelle is, is, oh, hi, Michelle. How I, I didn't recognize the, the name, but yes, um, she's listing all the, the locations of the Kinda selling products, but they're the ones that are uh, sponsoring me to come out there. Anyway, so I, in addition to doing my full-time job, which is 
social media, getting, you know, answering questions on that, directing people the right places, creating the videos, class notes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if when I teach, I need to find a location. And I had, let's see, I've been rejected or I have rejected 22 locations in Southern California because they all, I'd have to have 500 people in the room in order to, um, <laughs> make it to make it make it worth my mile. So it's California has been very expensive. I'm, I was trying to find something, but so that's the most rejections I've got. I I was currently looking also in uh, Chicago area, see if I could find something there. There, um, it's hard once you start getting to um, locations because I'm was looking in August and September. They have to be lots of weddings going on um, for the weekends, and most of you guys want your classes on the weekends. If we can do it during the week, it's usually not a problem. But finding a classroom space that can hold 30 people with power and the catering, I'd rather you know it's so nice. Um, a couple of people that have done the events. Um, we order out from a deli and we have the deli brought in. And so they bring it all to us so that we don't have to leave. Because if you have to leave, that means you have to get a place and whatnot. And I have to chop two hours, make a two hour window. Here we are all together. So we have to bring in lunch. But if they have a, say a $1,200 per day catering option, that's a, that's a lot of money um, just for food. So uh, that's, that's usually the biggest thing is the catering option. So finding a place with that can do power electricity, 24 to 30 people in the room with a, a very low catering minimum. That's, that's what I'm looking for. So if any of you guys that want me to come someplace, have a, have a connection with the local hotel, um, maybe, maybe a niece, a nephew, somebody works there <laughs> and uh, can grease those wheels and make it happen. We'll see what we can do. But otherwise, I like I said, I am I'm trying to find something in the Southern California, maybe Phoenix area. Um, the thing is, is that I can't I don't suggest dealers to me because I'm an Imbrilliance dealer. I'm an independent educator. I go around the country. I do this on my own. Imbrilliance doesn't pay me. I don't work for them. I'm Lisa Shaw, and I do all this education on my own. And the way I make money is I um um what do I do? Um, what do I do? I sell software. So it, that I'm a dealer. So to have me go to a dealership and sell and try to teach, uh, who sells the software? They, they, they need to make their money too. So um, also many dealers, and I'm not saying all of them, but the dealers that I've worked for in the past, they need to pay my fee, my teaching stuff. They have to sell software. So a lot of the classes at a dealership end up being uh, sales pitches. And all of my events, all of my classes are not sales pitches. I don't care if you have the software or not. I'm teaching. So that's what the fee is for, is for the knowledge that's coming out of my head and, and getting impaled into yours. So that's, we've had no, it's, that's, that's just the way it is. Okay. Dax uses the convention center. Yeah, but, um, I'm not, I can't, <laughs> I'm not Dax. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not a, a convention center. Um, and those are, <laughs> so I can only do, yeah, I can't rent out that, but. There are, oh yes, it's, yes, I had, I have, uh, uh, around Schaumburg, Schaumburg, I love the, there's a few places that I've stayed in Schaumburg that have great meeting rooms. Usually it's a meeting room and I love working with the Hampton Inn and the Holiday Inn Express because usually um, they're easy to work with and all of them have been um, booked out. So we'll see. A lot of people don't, they also don't get back to me because I don't think they understand exactly what we do. Um, when I say, you know, I want to teach them machine embroidery software, they're, they're no, it's just like right over their heads. So, um, anyway, uh, try inland California. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I try everything, but I can only do so much. Okay. So you don't, I don't need any more. I have, I need a clone <laughs> and I don't have one. So I can only do so much and I try what I can do. If I can't do it, I can't do it. But I do know in the works that I have, I have Houston. I will do the applique getaway. I do the everything embroidery market and I have the Houston event set up. I have the Denver event set up and I'm going to Australia in November. So we'll see what I can get between here and now. So, uh, so Rita, if we want to or stitch artists, uh, huh? Or is it combined with stitch artists too? Uh, 
basically whatever I showed here uh, in just today, I mean, I went through all the different programs, but these were all Stitch Arts level one functions. Level two can, does that, but it also does more. So, um, Yes. Now, just to guys let you know, I do, yes, in Brilliance has their, their, their coupon, but as I mentioned, I'm also an affiliate. I didn't get paid to do this guy. So those of you that uh, sometimes see me, uh, see posts that, um, and Sherry, is you, you reminded me because I am an affiliate. So when someone clicks on my affiliate link and purchase the software, I get a small commission saying, you know, hey, thank you, thank you, and you get to, to do that. So on my website, if, and I'll put this in the comments, I did a class at Sew Expo, and for that class, it was a scissor class. It had nothing to do with machine embroidery, but we talked about scissors. But I put all of my handouts on my website, and it's uh, sewbubbles.com slash sewexpo, and I'll add that link here. On that page, not only has the class notes for that scissor class, in case anyone's interested, it also has a free in-the-hoop design on, let's see, this is the little scissor case done in in the hoop. How about, let me go and click this. How do I do that? Move this over here, off that screen. Boom. Boom. Okay. So this is the little scissor case. And these are the little scissors. So like this is a bent pair of the Kai scissors that are on there. Anyway, this is a free design that's on that page. So it's so expo, uh, so bubbles. So it's so-bubbles.com slash sew expo you get this free embroidery design in the be working file so you if you digitize you can actually see what it is also on that page is a link to the handout for the classes my affiliate link and a 10 percent off promo code so that's all there so if you get it through me because you watched this and i convinced you that you needed to get it <laughs> I mean, I don't want, you don't have to worry about it. If I did nothing for you, then hey, that's great. But um, that's, that is how I, that's how I get paid to do these things. Um, I, I, I sell the software and that's, that's just how it is. Rita, so what are you teaching is, um, I think I answered that question. Since you sell the software, how do I buy it from you and not just from the Embrilliant site? And I, that was, my link is on my website. So if you click on the Embrilliant software link, that's, it says on the upper left corner, that goes and gives me, it just gives a, it's an affiliate. Kind of like when, if you watch um, one of these live things and they give you Amazon links and you click on it, they make like a, a percentage, same type of thing. I just make, I don't, you get your software from them. I give a coupon code and it is listed on my website that I gave that link. Um, I think it's bubbles something or other. I don't remember what the number is, but it's on that page. And I will put that link in the, I'll edit the description of this little live video and stick it up there so you guys can can get that information. Oh my God, I've been yammering all the way for over an hour. Oh, no wonder I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> no wonder I'm tired. Okay, guys. So we have 34 people watching still. That's pretty darn cool. At least I think that's how many we have. If I don't see any more questions pop up, I'm going to um, let you guys go. I think I'm going to try and get this scheduled to do, and I don't know what the schedule is going to be, but we'll do it again and I'll do something different. And like I mentioned, because I'm doing it on my Sew Bubbles um, page, this one's on Stitch Artist, but I can also do Essentials and Enthusiast and DRK and, and I will make an announcement when I post it like I posted this one saying it was just about Stitch Artist. I will um, put it down that X... This one's going to be about blah, blah, blah. So I can share it to the uh, Brilliant and Brilliance group and and do more than just Stitch Artists because I do know all the software programs. Okay, so no other questions popped up. I Hopefully you guys had a great night. <gasps> Don't mean to be drinking on screen, but it's after hours. It's definitely 5 o'clock somewhere. It's 7 o'clock here in Colorado. I need to go walk my babies. And I hopefully you all have a great night and I will see you later online. For those of you that join late, once this is processed, you'll be able to watch it from the beginning again. Thanks. Thanks guys. Have a great after, a great evening and I will talk to you soon. Bye.